Talking a little bit earlier about making a top five games and specific Pokemon formats that you guys can be playing to actually prepare for Scarlet and Violet. I see so many people just grinding away on Sword and Shield playing Series 12, Series 13, and in reality, I think there are better uses of your time and very specific formats that can teach you guys mechanics we know are going to work in Sword and Shield and teach you how to correctly play doubles and or singles from the beginning. Um, so you guys can actually be practicing the right formats. So uh, I have a whole list of like different Pokemon games down here, and I'm going to show you guys my ideas uh, and just a, I guess a general list of the games you should play. And we'll start in D, and so this is going to be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 up at the top. So I think the first game that you can play that actually still has an in-game ladder for stuff that you guys can be practicing to be the best Pokemon players that you can be in Scarlet and Violet are actually going to be the Let's Go games. And the reason I think the Let's Go games are so important is because they take away IVs, they take away EVs, they take away items, they take away all the things other than natures, and they give you a very, very bare bones Pokemon experience. One really cool thing about the Let's Go games, if you have them, is there is still an active in-game ladder. And the really cool thing about Let's Go is because they're taking away so many things, it teaches you the importance of leading correctly. Whether you're playing singles or doubles, it doesn't really matter. There's people to play against in both situations. It teaches you the importance of leading correctly for the situation, flow charting correctly, pinning your opponent correctly, and it gives you very clear-cut indications into when you're doing that right and when you're doing that wrong. Because if you lead incorrectly in Let's Go in a not very safe way and you lose a Pokemon, it doesn't matter if you're playing singles or doubles, you're going to put yourself in a situation where you're going to fall behind early and it's going to be really, really hard to get out of that. So it's going to really, really stress the importance of leading correctly, analyzing the team preview. And I think that's a skill that the Let's Go games do a really, really good job of practicing. It takes literally like a really long time, weeks, months, years to learn how to correctly lead. And you're obviously you're not going to do it right every single time, but what we're going to start seeing is there are safe leads to go against in almost every single situation. If you build your team correctly, Let's Go games are really, really good for doing that. So that's my opinion. Again, this works for singles or doubles. And the cool thing about, like I said about Let's Go is that there is an active ladder that still plays that game in game. So the next game, what do you guys think the next game is? Uh, the next game is going to be a remake. They don't have the official sprites up here, but it's going to be the Gen 4 remakes. You could also technically be playing like Gen 4 OU on Showdown, um, but the Gen 4 remakes, another cool thing about them is they do have um, that in-game ladder still. There is still the in-game way to play against actual opponents, and a lot of people should, you should be practicing like in-game if you can. I think practicing in-game is going to be really, really important because it gets you used to the battle timer. It gets used to you're looking at the screen and in any sort of situation where you're practicing to be better at something, you want to replicate the situations and practice that you'd be doing when you're performing or when you're actually like doing your best. So it you should be trying to play these games in game if you can. But um, yeah, the uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl remakes, that's, that would be a really, really good game to practice both singles or doubles. The best reason why they're on this list is because it's basically what Pokemon is right now, but without Dynamax. So the VGC version of that is going to be really, really good. I think it's. I think if you're looking to be the best VGC player you can going into Scarlet and Violet, grinding BDSP VGC is the best use of your time because it shows you the importance of fake out. It shows you the importance of speed tiers. It shows the importance of like reapplying trick rooms, tailwinds, screens, weather. It has a good enough updated decks and all of the moves, mons, EVs, everything are updated to what we would currently think of in like a Gen 8 standard play. So it's the most updated version to play VGC without Dynamax, in my opinion. And like I said, there are still players, there are still rooms, there are still people doing it. You can play it on Showdown, you can play it in game. I think that BDSP doubles is a really, really good use of your time. And there's a ton of really cool stuff that you can actually find by playing that format. So I think it's a really, really good use of understanding the game without Dynamax and also without all of the broken legendaries. Like right now in Sword and Shield, we have Series 13, Series 12. There's legendaries like everywhere. BDSP is going to take a lot of those out, uh, showcase the importance of lesser used mons. You're going to see things like Haunch Crows. You're going to see things like uh, Chimecos, uh, a lot more Gastrodon, a lot more Scizor. But those are still really cool mons that people need to understand the importance of going into the next gen, in my opinion. So this next one, this next one, I don't have like a little uh, icon for it. but So we're just going to use uh, this. It's not gen one, but it's going to be on showdown and it's going to be random battles. 
Now, random battles teach you a few things. You can see I have, I have random battles selected up here. Random battles, you can select all these formats to play on Showdown, by the way, if you want to test things on Showdown. The cool thing about random battles is it gives you a random team. Your opponent has a random team. Uh, the move sets, I think, are set to whatever Pokemon you get. But the cool thing about random battles is let's just give a random username and go into a game. Win or lose, the cool thing about random battles is you're learning more about uh, covering for every single option. Look, there's no team preview. You're learning, you want to you actually understand every move that that Zapdos can have. Also think about every potential um, uh, teammate that Zapdos can have. And so it really shows you how to like close out games. Because like, let's say, let's just hover our Layla for like a second here. It says we're top of Layla with, we have a life warp, right? So we don't know what their item is, but we do know that Zapdos, we can see it outspeeds our Layla. Um, if let's say we were a choice Lele or something, and we locked ourselves in a Moonblast, and they switched into a Steel type, and then they blocked us, and then they started like setting up with like Iron Defenses, that could be really bad. And so it shows us how to correctly prepare for a, literally almost anything happening at once, as well as like it shows us how to correctly close out games against every single situation, and also gets you familiar with a lot of different Pokemon at once. They're also super fun to play. Like we'll just go for a Psychic here. Um, I think that you can still Dynamax here. We'll, we'll play this game out just to show you how it works. But um, I think that random battles are a lot of fun. We haven't even seen the rest of my team. Um, not revealed, not revealed. I love playing formats without the team preview as well. It really showcases the strength that we don't really see anymore, but the strength of like saving info. You can see my team down here. I have a Lele. I have a Conkelder with a Flame Orb. So it looks like it's a it's a gut set. Uh, we have a Relicant with Leftovers Body Press. That's sick, actually. Uh, we have Moltres. Good switch in for Sylveon here. Um, if we needed to. Vasculin with Choice Band Adaptability, holy moly. And a Kumpe with a Choice Specs Giga Drain. That's terrible. Um, I think I'm just going to stay in. And we could also Dynamax this one, which is pretty cool. If you want to Dynamax the person, you can. Uh, so it might be a Vested Sylveon. Might be. If you Orbed. No, you're left over. So you're just super, super bulky. I'll just switch in my Moltres then. And Moltres should be a good switch in on Sylveon for the most part. Yep, and I think we have uh, Flame Body, Heavy Duty Boots. Good set on this Moltres. We can go over like three or four different things. Uh, I think we're going to just roost in next turn because we should be able to outspeed a Sylveon. Also, levels are a little bit different here. You see like we have level 80, they have level 84. You just learn a little bit more about your speed tiers. And, you know, we'll go for a Fire Blast here. Sanaconda switching on Fire Blast. Can we get the big burn? No. But we should be able to two-shot this guy, and I don't think he outspeeds our Moltres. So let's go. We hit. Oh my gosh, Moltres is so good. So it's, show, it's showing us how to learn a little bit more. Like, where else are you going to get, like, practice with Moltres? This game is forcing you to practice with mons that you're not used to using. Um, in this situation, I think we can just stay in and go for a Fire Blast. Air Slash might be good here too. But I think we need the Fire Blast damage. Psy Shock, ow. All right, so Fire Blast does 32%. They're 37. I think it's probably a better idea to, like, roost here. Let them get a recover. Go for an air slash potential flinch, then a uh, fire boss to finish him off. All right. Can we get a flinch? Oof. Big damage. I think I'm just going to go for the raw fire blast instead of the roost play. Oh, we get the miss. Never lucky. That's what I get for being greedy. And we're going to have to make this a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but roost is good. I think Moltres is actually a really, really cool Pokemon. And we'll roost again next turn as well and just play the long game. How many hyper voices do they have? Then we have 11 left. Like, technically, we could PP stall the the Hyper Voices. And you can also see that, like, Hyper Voice does more than Psy Shock. So if they want to start saving Hyper Voices for later... Like, I think also if we take out the Sylveon, we're just going to be in a really, really good spot. But you can kind of see, like, I'm getting experience with other Pokemon. I'm trying my best to close out Pin um, while not knowing exactly what they have. And I, I think this is a good skill that a lot of people should have. There's the Calm Minds. That's going to get dicey. So the fact that they're Calm Minding now is going to change what I want to do. I don't want to Dynamax... Um, I think I can actually outspeed here. So Moltres is 190. Basculin does outspeed. I wonder what they're going to be going for. This is... I think that, like, Fire Blast should still get a 2-hit KO. There's a burn. That's good. That's it. We got it. All we gotta do is hit one more Fire Blast. Let's go! Fire Blast! No! No! It's fine. Even if we get the KO here, like, we can win with Basculin. Ah, uh, that sucked. We should actually just, like, try and roost it out then. I, I guess we're waiting to get crit at this point, but like if we can actually wait out all this. Oh, there's our crit. There's the crit. They got it. I guess we can try and flinch as well. If we get one flinch, 30% chance, it's fine. Let's see what they're going to do. Let's PP stall all these hyper voices out. Let's just chill. I think one thing that playing singles as well teaches you is the importance of you don't need to like win everything. And the importance of value is like making your opponent not have an impactful turn. That's a win. So, like, sitting here and wasting every single one of their 
uh, Hyper Voice PP, that's going to be super valuable because they can't hit for that type anymore. Which means we can switch in our Lele and just like beat him with a Psy Shock or a Psychic or something like that. And if they throw up like one more Calm Mind, we go back up to Fold, then we'll go for Air Slashes. Let's think about this. We don't actually have to do that. We can we can go for one air slash this turn. Because we've actually restored a little bit more health. There's the flinch. Let's freaking go. You see the value? The value in playing the long game. Let's take it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I know this is a lot longer than people thought. Why Moltres? It's a random battle. It gives you a random team to play with. I didn't, I didn't set this up. Let's think about what we want to do against Azul. Psychic's big damage. I think I can just go for, like, Draining Kiss and out, out scale with it. Because we're thick. Oh, God, nasty plot. All right, that's dicey. Do we have Aqua Jet here? We do. So we just need to do a little bit of damage here. They could, they're probably going to max this guy. And this is their big win con right here. Like, this Azov is the big win con, I think. Holy moly. Burn never lucky! That's fine. Never lucky. That's enough range for Aqua Jet, though, no matter what they do. Even if they were to max it. Bro, why'd they do that? What? Dude, this Comfey's go coming back. Comfey. Let's go. Comfey busted. I think I have two months left. We still got all six. Let's see what they got. I love random battles, man. They're so much fun. And let's see. What do you got in the back? Like, what do you have to beat this Comfey? Sand Slash. I can't do anything against that. Um, and they can get a speed boost if we switch this in incorrectly. So I'm actually going to switch my Conkle get my Flame Orb proc, soak any damage they have. There's the SD. So you see, I, I analyze that situation. Like, I because I play so much, I know when I'm at threat. If I were just to stay with that Comfy and let them get plus six, and then, like, maybe they got, like, a speed boost as well, they'd sweep us out. But switching in and optimally punishing this thing and getting my Flame Orb activated for my guts, like, so good. You can max this guy and still it would pro Oh my gosh, I can't believe that guy didn't go down. It's fine. We're still going to be able to get it. These orbs, too. Wow, 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 wow. All right, so just the mock punch is fine. But you see, like, these situations where, like, let's say I let that guy to plus six, and then he maxed it, and then went for, like, a hailstorm and set his own slush rush, like, we'd lose. Vespa Quinn is the last Pokemon, saving the best for last. Uh, I'm just going to go for a facade. It's a lot of damage. He outspeeds our conk. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Let's see. We don't even need to show these other Pokemon, but I can save I can save Vasquin. I think I'm going to go with the Moltres. I think I'm going to max it. And we're just going to go for a, probably just a flare. It's more damage in the airstream. Let's go, Moltres. Big flare. Oh my gosh, this guy's staying alive. Toxic. Yeah, Vesquin's usually a toxic star. Even if he has like a protecting move here, uh, you have to max guard it. Why can't I use that? What? Oh, am I out of PP? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Pressure, yo. And so that's random battles. I think there's a lot of things to learn. A lot of things to learn about preserving information. Um, a lot of things to learn about like stopping your opponent's win conditions. Um, and just playing very defensively. I think they're very, very good for learning how to play. So I would definitely think about looking at random battles. So remember, we don't have an icon for random battles, but like that's right there. And then let's see. We have the next thing to practice if you're looking to get better at going into Sword, or sorry, Scarlet and Violet is going to be Sword and Shield, I think. Sword and Shield is still a really good use of your time. It's basically the game that we're playing right now. You can play Series 12, Series 13. You're, the reason why Sword and Shield's on here is, yes, you're playing with a lot of, like, legendaries and stuff like that, um, but, you know, you can play against a ton of active competitive players right now. So you're getting, like, perf you're getting up to the date uh, competitive experience. You're learning how to pilot around Incineroar, how to play around Urshfu. The thing is, we don't know if a lot of these Pokemon are going to be in the game. Like, a lot of the skills that we're taking into playing in Sword and Shield are reliant around Dynamax. And a lot of the Pokemon in those formats that are good is good because Dynamax is good. And so we, since Dynamax isn't going to be in the game, it's going to definitely like change how the format's played. So you don't want to go super all in, but you do want to understand what each one of these Pokemon bring to the table. You want to understand what Incineroar does, understand what Rillaboom, Urshifu, Regilecki, all those Pokemon do. And so Sword and Shield's great. You can play singles or doubles. Really, really fun format. And um, yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with like preparing yourself and learning everything there is to know about how the game's mechanics work, getting all the Pokemon you can, doing all the dens. I think this is a good game to play, and it's still a really good way to use your time. Now, let's go into the best thing, straight up, the best format to practice, right? The best format to practice if you want to learn how to be the best player you can for Scarlet and Violet. What do you guys think it is? I've listed a lot of formats here. This format, I think you can only play it on Showdown, 
but you can actually go watch VODs of this format to get a really good understanding. So these, if you're going to be watching any format, like watch these formats, but like watch the format for this game. And that's going to be Gen 5. Gen 5. Uh, specifically like Black 2, White 2, in my opinion. But a really good thing that Gen 5 had is it had gems. Gems gave any move that you were using a 1.5 boost the first turn you used them. So you can go watch my content for Gen 5. You can go watch the World Championships for Gen 5. So, so, so good. This is a format that doesn't have Dynamax. Yes, it has Legendaries, but it has Legendaries that aren't completely overpowered because they're not the, like, Kyogre Groudons. It has stuff like Landorus, Cresselia, Thunderous. So Legendaries that we're used to playing with. But the gem mechanic is very, very, very similar to the new Terra mechanic, right? The new Terra mechanic lets you change your type and if you change your type, you can hit for, you know, more damage than you would normally be able to hit for. And it changes your defensive typing. And you can you can even double down into your same type and get an even bigger power boost. That's basically gems. It allowed moves that were weaker to still pick up KOs on mons that you didn't really expect. Like, for example, one of the years at, at Worlds, someone used Flying Gem, Hidden Power Flying Landorus, because Landorus didn't get, like, a special attack for flying. I don't even think I got a physical attack for flying back then. It didn't get acrobatics or fly, I don't think. And that was the only way for Landorus to actually beat Conkeldur, right? And so it basically terrored into a flying type and got a boost off that flying type to be able to make sure that it could KO Lando. Or, sorry, KO Conkeldur. There was a ton of that stuff back in that format. You saw a lot of gems. Most teams had, like, two or three gems on them at some points in the format. And they were... It's basically the same mechanic... It's just that gems take your item. And so I think that, uh, you know, the Terra mechanic is probably a better version of it, but it shows the usefulness of, like, playing defensively to wait till they reveal their gem, and then after that, putting pressure back on them. Um, and so I think that it's a really, really good format. It also shows how to play without any broken Dynamax. You know that I didn't put, like, Mega Evolution games on here? Those are all games that are based incredibly around their gimmick. The games that I included on here, other than Sword and Shield, are based around the actual gameplay. Analyzing speed tiers, analyzing fake outs, uh, playing around wide guard, uh, going for correct pins. Like these are the fundamentals of VGC that aren't just going herp derp into a gimmick and hope that you can roll your opponent before they realize what you're doing. Like there's nothing wrong with playing that way, but I feel if you're gonna play that way in every single game, you're just wasting your time when you could be using your time to learn how to correctly, you know, set up trick rooms, set up tailwinds, uh, mitigate damage through the use of screens, the actual, re like, what actual VGC is, right? And so I think that Black and White 2, um, you can play it on Showdown. Um, you can play singles for Black and White 2 as well. Those are really, really good formats to play to understand a little bit more about Weather Wars. All the things that I talked about could be applied to both singles or doubles. So that's my list. Um, I would say if you want to be the best, play Gen 5, VGC, or OU. Play uh, Sword and Shield. You can play VGC Series 12 or 13, or you can play even play some singles OU in those formats. You can play, uh, remember, uh, the third tier B was Random Battles, and those were a lot of fun as well. Uh, the fourth tier was, uh, you can play, you could play old Gen 4 OU, which is one of probably my favorite format, but also the BDSP OU and VGC, and last but not least, VGC and singles in the Let's Go games to understand the mechanics. So hopefully you guys like this stuff. I would also say look up videos on YouTube. There's a ton of creators that have videos going back all the way back to Gen 5 and Gen 4 for these formats. So think about checking those out. And uh, what do you guys think of the list? What do you guys think about the list? You say fake out's dead, doesn't have to be. Um... I wonder if Shedinja is going to be the game now. It could be. Gen 5 YouTube is something I have yet to tap into. Definitely going to check out your videos. Yeah, I have some. Like, I have some Gen 5 OU videos. I have videos from regionals up as well. There's some There's some good ones. There's some good ones. And it shows the usefulness of, like, gems. Like, layering up your moves um, and stuff like that. Like, it's the, the fundamentals of what VGC are. W list. So, hopefully it helped. Um, and, again, you can play all these formats on Showdown. Certain times a day, different people are playing. But, like, let's just go, like, watch a battle. Let's see if there's anyone playing Gen 5 OU right now. There's people playing Gen 5 OU right now. So, like, Gen 5 OU, oh, such a good format. Like, I love Gen 5 OU. This is, that's a good, this guy's gonna win. But let's just see some other battles. Like, let's go to, like, uh, Gen 4 OU. People are playing that right now, too. So, like, there are people to play against in these formats. Let's see, is there Gen 5 VGC on here? I think for the Gen 5 VGC, you're gonna have to, like, you're going to have to either do like a custom game with other people and just like create that or you're gonna have to like watch content i think the watching content is probably going to be where um it would work 
Was normal gem extreme speed good? No, it wasn't. I've used it though. I used to get a 1.5 boost. The cool thing about Gen 5 and the gems was that you used to be able to make Pokemon do mixed sweepers, right? You used to be able to be like full physical and just have a gem with like a one special attack that could pin like a Ferrothorn or a Pokemon that like a four times weakness and it was really, really cool. But yeah, it looks like there's... Yeah, Gen, Gen 5 doubles OU right here. Gen 5 EDC 2013. So let's see if there's anyone... There are literally people playing it right now. You could, This is doubles OU, but like you could practice it right now. That's like super cool that people are still playing those formats. So you can, you can actually practice these things. So this is the exact, like, this is what the game is going to be. More so this guy's team over here with like Blaziken and Amoongus, like, uh, extra sort of stuff like that. That's, that's pretty cool. I think that's really, really cool.